All right, today we are going to be starting section 2.2, and we are going to be talking about power functions. Okay, whoops. All right, so for a power function, it says any function that can be written in the form f of x equals k times x to the a, where k and a are non-zero constants. So this number can't be zero, and this number can't be zero. They call that a power function. The constant a is called the power, and k is called the constant of variation, or constant of proportion. We say f of x varies as the a-th power of x, or f of x is proportional to the a-th power of x. So to determine whether a given function is a power function, it must be a numerical constant touching a variable to some degree. Careful, certain letters represent numbers, like pi and k. Um, those represent numbers, those aren't variables. Um, e is another one. Um, you can't have a variable as an exponent, and you can't have more than one variable multiplied together. Again, unless they're using what the letter that they're using represents a numerical value, again, like pi or k or e. Okay, direct variation is when you have a power function where the exponent is positive. Inverse variation is going to be a power function that has negative exponents. So it says determine if the function is a power function. If it is, then state the power and constant of variation. For number one, f of x equals one fifth x to the third. Is that a power function? Well, we got to look at our definition. K and A can't be zero. Okay, you can't have a variable as an exponent. We don't. We can't have more than one variable multiplied together. There's only an x. We're good. So yes, it's a power function. My constant of variation would be one fifth, and my power would be three. So k is one fifth, a is three, and it's direct because three is positive. Okay. For number two, is it a power function? Again, looking at the definition. Yes, it is. K and A are not zero. So K would be negative three-fourths, and the power would be two, and it's direct because my power is positive. Okay, for three, look at it. Yes, okay. A and K are not zero. K would be three, A would be three-sevenths. It's direct because three-sevenths is positive. The next one, yes, k would be 3, k is whatever's touching x, a is whatever's in the air, my power would be negative 2 sevenths, it's going to be an inverse variation because my power is negative. Okay, f of x equals 3x to the 3 fifths, well it's really no different than that one other than the power is different, so yes, it is a power function, the constant of variation would be 3. The A or the power would be 3 fifths, and it's direct because 3 fifths is positive. Okay, the next one, number six, is it a power function? No. K and A must be non zero constants, not variables. X is a variable, not a non zero constant, so no, this is not a power function. Okay, what about seven? there's no variable in it, okay? And I can write it as a variable. I can rewrite f of x equals negative eight is the same thing as f of x equals negative eight times x to the zero, because anything to the zero degree is one, so that's still negative eight. I can rewrite that as this, which a, it's, the definition says a must be a non-zero constant, and in this case, even though they don't write it out, my a is zero and it can't be, it has to be non-zero. So that's a no. Okay, the next one. This is one where it's tricky. Everybody's gonna think that it's not because I said you can't have two variables touching. Pi isn't a variable. Pi is a constant. 3.14, yada 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 yada. So actually this is a power function. Your constant of variation would be four pi and your power would be two. Sorry, I'm not knowing my penny keeps making those weird lines. It is direct because my power is positive. So 
the same with the circumference formula. It is a power function. The constant of variation would be 2 pi. The power would be 1. It's direct because my exponent is positive. Okay, 10 is big fat no because a and k have to be non-zero. And k is 0 in this case, so it is not a power function. Okay, <coughs> push pause and do this problem. And hopefully you got the power is negative 3 fifths and the constant of variation is 6. Do this one. Hit pause. See if you get it right. Not a power function because a and k have to be non-zero constants. Your variable or your exponent cannot be a variable. All right, a monomial function. A monomial function looks exactly the same as a power function. All they did was change this to an n instead of an a because for it to be a monomial function, k has to be a constant and n has to be positive. So nothing changed about k. That has to be a constant. But to be a monomial function, your power has to be positive. Okay? So for number one, is that a monomial function? Well, again, I can write that as negative 6x to the 0, and it says n must be a positive integer. 0 is an integer, but it's not positive or negative, so that doesn't count. So it is not. Okay? <clears throat> 12. No, this is a no. Scratch that. This is a no. Um, because the power has to be positive. It's a power function, but it is not a monomial function because the power has to be positive. Sorry about that. Okay, the next one is your constant of variation would be negative 8. Your power would be 7. It is a monomial function because my power is positive, which means it's... So basically your direct variation ones are going to be monomial functions. 14 isn't a, pos a monomial function or a power function because your power cannot be a variable. 15 is no because you can't have more than one variable multiplied together. 16 is no because I can rewrite this. You can bring D back upstairs by making its exponent negative. It's a power function, but it's not going to be a monomial function because N must be a positive integer and negative 2 is not a positive integer. It's negative. Okay, so pause and try and do this one. And the degree is 6. It is a monomial function because it's, it's positive, and my leading coefficient is negative 6, or my k. Okay, just pause and do this one. It is not a monomial function. This was actually the same one I used on my um, example. I can rewrite that. I can move D upstairs by changing its uh, degree to a negative. And to be a monomial function, you can't have a negative power. So it's not a monomial function. It's a power function, but it's not a monomial function. All right, so describe power functions that represent direct variation, and that's when you have positive powers. And an uh, inverse one is when you have negative powers. Okay. All right, now, graphs of power functions. Power functions follow some general rules that will help you graph them. It will give you a, a good sketch of a graph. It might not be as accurate, but you'll get a good sketch of it. Okay, so here's what you need to know. Four things can happen on a power function. Okay, first of all, what you need to know is that we're only looking at either the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. So basically, if you're looking at a graph, we're looking at this half of the graph. Now, that, and that's what they're talking about for when x is greater than or equal to 0. So they're only looking at this section of graph. This is when x is greater than or equal to 0. The other half of the graph is when x is less than or equal to 0. Okay? So what we're looking on for right now if you'll memorize what happens on this side of the graph, okay, then you can use whether the graph is even or odd to figure out what happens on 
this side of the graph. It'll either reflect evenly or over the origin or it won't be defined over there. Okay, so first of all, if k is positive, or I'm sorry, if you have negative exponents, I forgot what I was doing first. If you have negative exponents, okay, for one thing, every single one of these, every single power function will always pass through 1 comma k. So whatever that constant of variation is, all of the power functions pass through 1 comma k, all of them. So you can always get 0, 0, and that point. Now, how you draw your graph through those, except for the negative exponent ones, how you draw your graph through that, po that point 1k depends on the exponent. If you have negative exponents, the graph is going to be asymptotic to both axes. What that means is it's going to get close to the y-axis, but it's never going to cross it. It's going to get close to the x-axis, but it's never going to cross it. That's what asymptotic means. If k is positive, then you're going to end up in the first quadrant. If k is negative, you're going to end up in the fourth quadrant. So if your constant variation is positive, you end up in quadrant one. If it's negative, you end up in quadrant four. Okay? Now, what happens, oh, sorry. So if you have negative exponents, your graph, again, will be asymptotic to the axes. If you have a, an exponent that's exactly 1, you're going to have a linear function that's going to go through 0, 0, and 1k. If you have an exponent, if your power, again, is less than 0, that's the asymptotic one. If it's greater than 0, meaning positive, then it's going to curve like this. Okay? If your exponent is between 0 and 1, like 1 third or 2 thirds or 2 fifths, Okay, that's between 0 and 1, and it's going to curve this way. Okay. Okay, and we're back. All right, so, where were we? Again, the um, negative exponents will be asymptot asymptotic to both axes. If k is positive, you're going to end up in quadrant 1. If k is negative, you're going to end up in quadrant 4. Okay, and the other ones, like I said, if your power is positive, it's going to kind of curve up. If a is exactly 1, it's linear. If a is between 0 and 1, meaning like a fraction, it's going to kind of curve the other way. Okay, and same thing if it's in quadrant 4. If a is positive, it's going to curve like this. If a is between 0 and 1, it's going to curve like this. If a is exactly 1, it's going to be linear. Okay? So now, what happens on this side of the axis when x is less than 0? Okay? When x is less than 0, one of three things can happen. Either it's not defined when x is 0, like the square root function. You know, when we graph the square root function... It's not defined over here because you can't put negative letters or negative numbers under a radical. So if it's not defined over there, nothing's going to be over here when you graph the whole function. If f is an even function, then whatever happens on this side will reflect over here evenly. It will reflect across the y-axis. If it's an odd function, it's going to be symmetric about the origin and what that happens is like if you have something like this it's going to reflect over the origin okay so here we go all right um again i just kind of broke them up so that you can sorry i broke them up so that you could see them individually Okay, so if you have this function, and k is positive, that means I'm going to be in the first quadrant, and a is exactly 1, you're going to, it's going to pass through 1k, and it's going to be linear. Okay, if k is positive, again, I'm in quadrant 1, but if a is positive, meaning greater than 1, it's going to pass through 1k, but it's going to curve up. Okay, if you have k is positive, that means you're in quadrant 1. 
but your power is between 0 and 1 like a fraction, it's going to go through 1k, but it's going to curve this way instead of like this with the, with the um, positive. All right, and if k is positive, you're in quadrant 1, but if a is negative, then it's going to be that boomerang graph, that asymptotic graph to both axes. Okay, if k is negative, you're in quadrant 4. But if k, is, or I mean, if, so if k is negative, you're in quadrant 4. But if a is exactly 1, it's going to pass through 1k, but it's going to go through, or it's going to be linear. Okay? If you are, sorry, I should be keeping my color straight. If k is negative, again, you're in quadrant 4. If a is positive, it's going to curve like this. Okay? If k is negative, you're in quadrant 4. If a is between 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction, then it's going to curve like this. And finally, if k is negative, we're in quadrant 4. But if a is negative also, again, that's the boomerang graph that's going to go asymptotic to both axes. All right. The Now, what happens on the other side? You can... Try and decide whether the function is undefined. Some of them are obvious, like the square root function. Okay, some of them not so much. Again, you can try and figure out if they're even. If I have whole numbers, I get that it's even. Fractions are a little hard to tell. Same with the odd ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to graph the section that's in quadrant one or four, and then we're going to use our graphing calculator to let us know what happens on this half of the graph when x is less than zero. Again, it'll either reflect um, across the origin or it'll reflect across the y-axis or nothing will happen. Okay, and we're going to use graphing technology to help us with that. All right, so to sketch your graphs of power functions, you need to find the values of k and a and figure out where you're going to be. If k is positive, you're in quadrant 1. If k is negative, you're in quadrant 4. Plot 1, comma k and then sketch your curve according to the diagram using your exponents. If it's negative, it's a boomerang. Greater than one curves this way. Exactly one is straight. Between zero and one curves this way. Okay, if you're in quadrant four, same thing, just upside down in quadrant four. All right, so it says state the power and constant of variation for the function, graph it, and analyze it. You need to write this with a rational exponent instead of radical form. And if you remember, when you rewrite a radical, you take the x out. Your numerator, will, for your exponent, is going to be a fraction. Your numerator will be the 1, and whatever is here will be your denominator. So there's my function, which if I make it look like this, I have to have something touching that. I have to have something multiplied by my base. If there's nothing there, it's the same as 1. So my constant of variation would be 1, and my power would be 1 third. So I know that this is going to pass through 1 comma k, which means it's going to pass through 1 comma 1. So if I decide what quadrant I'm in, I'm going to draw that that big. If I try and decide what quadrant I'm in, k is positive, so I'm in quadrant 1. I'm going to plot my 1k. There's 1, there's 1, there's my 1 comma k, and then I look at my exponent. Is my exponent, does a, is a less than one, um, 0, is a equal to 1, is a between 0 and 1, is that neg negative, equal, or is a greater than 1? My a is between 0 and 1 because it's a fraction, it's one-third, okay? So if it's between 0 and 1, we're doing this one. So to sketch the graph, I just do this. And I'm done. Now you have to figure out what happens on the other side. Well, is this an even, an odd function, or undefined on the other side? Again, this one I'm pretty sure is odd, so I think it's going to reflect. But if you type it in the graphing calculator, sure enough, there's the one I drew. Okay, goes through 1, 1. 
and then it reflects over the origin so it turns itself in other words it reflects down and then over okay so now I can analyze it well if you got the whole graph I just looking at the graph this thing continues left to right so my domain is negative infinity to infinity the range this goes down forever this side goes up forever so the range is also negative infinity to infinity it's continuous there's no breaks I don't have continuous. I don't know how to spell it. Um, there's no breaks. There's no jumps. Symmetry is odd because it reflected over the origin. Boundedness, it's not because it, this will go up forever and down forever. Local extrema, no, not really. I mean, I guess I could. No, there's not. Asymptotes, no. Okay, and behavior to use limit notation. The limit as x approaches infinity, so I'm reading the graph going this way. If I read the graph going this way, as I pick bigger and bigger and bigger x's, this is getting higher and higher and higher, so the function is going to infinity also. To go the other way, to take the limit of this end behavior, so I'm reading the graph this way, the limit as x approaches negative infinity, this is getting lower and lower and lower, ever so gradually, but it's getting lower. So the function is going to negative infinity. And that's how you analyze the graph. Okay. All right, the rest of them, they just want us to describe how to obtain the graph of the given function from the graph g of x equals x to the n with the same power n. Sketch the graph by hand and support your answer with a grapher. All right, so we have a constant, a variation is 2, and my power is 3. So since k is positive, I'm going to be in quadrant 1. Since a is positive, I'm going to be doing the red graph. Okay, so if I sketch my little picture here, my power function is going to pass through 1, comma k. So I'm going to go through 1, 2. And because A is positive, it's going to curve like this. And now to figure out what happens on the other side, this is an odd function, so it's going to reflect over the origin. But check it out on a graphing calculator, and I was right. Okay, if you notice on the graph, 1, 2, it passed through it, and it curved up like the red one. I guess I should have used red. Okay, and then it reflects over the origin because it's odd. Okay, all right, let's do another one. In this case, my k would be negative two-thirds, which means I'm in quadrant four. My power would be four, which is positive, which means, again, I'm doing red, but in quadrant four. And it's going to pass through one comma negative two-thirds. So if I make me a graph here, 1 comma negative 2 thirds is going to be about right there. And I'm graphing red, which curves like this. Okay, This is an even function. Like I said, I can tell when the whole numbers, it's the fractions that I really have to use my graphing calculator for. 4 is even, which means this is going to reflect over on the other side. Okay, and if we look and we type it in, sure enough, there's my 1, negative 2 thirds. Their graph is a lot smaller than mine. And it does this, and then it reflects over on the other side. Okay, so you do this one. Push pause, come back. It should be B. K is negative 2 sevenths, which puts me in quadrant 4 and passes through 1 comma negative 2 sevenths. A is 4, which gives me a red curve. Okay, so if I go to 1 comma negative 2 sevenths, just barely under, and red curves like this. And let's see, 4 is even, so the other side should do this. And if we type it in, there we go. Okay, do this one, push pause. 
and come back and you should get C. Okay, C is going to be a blue one because the power is between 0 and 1. The K is 2.1, which is positive, so that puts me in quadrant 1, and it's going to pass through 1, 2.1. Since A is 2 thirds, that's between 0 and 1, so I'm using the blue curve. So if I go and type or plot 1, 2.1, and I draw a blue graph through it. Um, now again, this one, I don't know if that's even or odd. So I would type it in the graphing calculator and apparently that's even because this reflected across the y-axis to figure out what happens when x, what happens like on this side when x is less than zero, okay? All right, some more graphing, same thing. They're just gonna get a little bit more well, now they want to know, determine whether f is even, odd, or undefined for x is less than 0, and describe the rest of the curve, if any. Graph the function to see whether it matches the description. So we're doing the same thing, I just kind of got ahead of myself. So k would be 2, which is positive, which puts me in quadrant 1. a would be negative 3, which is less than 0, so now I need the green graph. It's going to pass through 1, 2. And the green graph goes asymptotic to both axes. Okay? And what's going to happen? 3 is odd, so it's going to reflect over the origin. And if we type it into check, sure enough, it did. Now mine's a little different because, again, I drew my, my lines really far apart. Okay, but there's the boomerang on this side, and then it reflects because it's odd. Okay, so let's do another one. Here, my k would be negative 1, which puts me in quadrant 4. My a would be 0 0.4, which is between 0 and 1. So that, again, I'm using the green graph. And it's going to pass through 1, negative 1. And it's going to go asymptotic. And since 0.4, I don't know if that's even or odd, I'm going to check my graph. It's even. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 0.4. Why is this doing a blue? Oh, Tamsin. I am so sorry, guys. If it's between 0 and 4, it's blue, not green. I apologize. Pay attention. Sorry, if it's between 0 and 1, it's blue, not green. So I do my 1, negative 1, and I do this. And then apparently 0. 0.4 is even, and I can tell because it reflected across the y-axis. So this is an even function. Okay? All right, you do this one, push pause, come back, and you should get C. Let's see if I can do this one without messing it up. All right, A, I mean K is negative 4, which puts me in quadrant 4 since it's negative, which means it's going to pass through 1, comma, negative 4. Since A is negative, it's going to be the green graph. Okay, since my A is less than 0, it's going to be the green one. So 1, negative 4, 2, 3, 4. They're kind of off here if you ask me. All right. And since it's negative, it's going to be asymptotic. Okay. And since I'm assuming that this is going to be even, because 2 is even, it's going to reflect on the other side then. Okay. All right. Do this one. Hit pause. All right, and on this one, hopefully you got C. If you didn't, let's look at Y. My K is negative 2, which puts me in quadrant 4, and it passes through 1, negative 2. My power is 5 thirds. People are going to go, that's between 0 and 1, so I should do blue, but 3 goes into 5 1 point something times, so it's actually greater than um, 1. So... 
um, I use the red graph. So I'm going to go through 1, comma, negative 2, and the red graph curves like that. Okay, 5 thirds, I don't know if it's even or odd, so I'm going to graph it, and it's odd because it reflected across the origin. So this is an odd function. Okay, do this one. And you should get B. My K is... One half, which is positive, so that puts me in quadrant one and passes through one comma one half. My a is negative five, which is less than zero, which means I have the boomerang graph. So if I plot one comma one half and then I boomerang through it, there's that one. Five is odd, so I'm assuming it's going to reflect over here. Oh, and it did. Okay. All right, so we already talked about those. And how do you graph a power function? You get your k, and that'll tell you that it'll pass through 1k, and it'll tell you what quadrant you're in. Positive is 1, negative is 4. Okay, then you get your a, and it, that will tell you what color graph to use, whether it's red, green, blue, or black. There's four of them. Red is when A is greater than one. Green is when A is less than zero. Blue is when A is between zero and one. And black is when A equals one. And then you just sketch the graph accordingly. All right, and we are done. So happy homework, and I will see you next time.